to showcase dance in a different environment that isn't dance within theatre spaces. And so I think lighting festivals, light at night is always really exhilarating and it's exciting and it's inspirational to see. And so bringing dance into this environment is also shotgunning off of that inspirational process and making dance another figure that is quite inspirational to see at night. With the texture of this wall, there's three distinct sections along, um, along its facade. And so that inspired three different uh, horizontal strips of the dance that could occur in these three sections. For my first site visit, I thought that these textures could be really inspirational to work with. I started learning creative coding when I was 19 because I think I was always really inspired by that digital and coded space because creative coding has had a really long history. It's been around since the 1960s and with computational logistics it's all zeros and ones and so when you are programming robots for example it's a conditional statement of if this doesn't happen that's going to happen and so you can design this whole process out but then moving um, into dance that has been designed with a digital outcome or through a digital process. That was, um, that was a progression where I discovered the use of projection in my creative coding designing and, and dance making and I thought that dance being mapped onto architecture was quite exciting to see. And so I was able to get a residency focused on projection and from there I was always investigating how dance can be applied onto architectural spaces and how dance can challenge these vertical long shafts that a lot of buildings have. With this series of urban media art, I always have the intention of making it legible to an audience. With a lot of postmodern art um, and also postmodern dance, it's quite exclusive to an audience who understands dance's semiology and dance's symbols in theatre and space. And so dance being fluid and dance is such a human expression, um, dance is so understandably human. Also like the invention of dance and music probably co coincided to happen at the same time. And so dance being such a recognisable action, being projected in an urban media setting, I did want to make this series of works designed in a way that was legible to an audience but also didn't exclude an audience from dance. And so I wanted to broadcast dance to a greater and more diverse audience. Recently, working with very experienced dancers, I haven't needed to um, hard choreograph a sequence because I'm working with really amazing and really embodied dancers who have refined their own practices and their own skills in dance. And so what I've been telling them in our choreographic practices and in the Tasmanian um, residency with social space is a soft form of guidance to show and um, to explain what works well and what works well in print making and together we can make these still prints as well as these movement fixtures in, in the space. And the process so far has involved dancers recorded in during during a residency period um, I'll film these dancers dancing and then I'll work behind the scenes to digitally compose these, these works. This process of works, it was actually inspired by a theorist called Anna McDonald and she was writing about time and also choreography being a process that induces mourning in an audience through its manipulation of time through space. And so what that means is choreography is uh, ephemeral, like dance is ephemeral, and so similar states of mind and being can never be returned to fully in choreographic practices. And so that lends itself, that lends dance to be quite improvisational and quite ephemeral through the dancer's practice of, I guess, through the dancer's current mindsets and time, in, in that time of performance. And so with this work, I, I was inspired by a French artist called Francois, Voigel, and with his works he utilizes a sort of time displacement and I, I learned his techniques on how he's making these works and I've also refined them to fit my needs with dance and so with this series of works and with the prints that I captured it's the history of the dance that has passed. With this series of works, I am aiming to make dance more inclusive of audiences and especially projection is quite inspirational to see at night. Some people say that projected light at night is the fire in which early humans can gather around to tell stories. And so seeing dance in this public space, it is to invoke that sense of awe and inspiration 
to start the conversation and storytelling about dance in public spaces. Because um, the works that I've been making have been quite large scale, projected onto buildings, I always have that idea and intention of creating awe in the audience. And so a mentor once told me that any faults in a digital um, design on your desktop screen is going to be magnified 10 times whilst projected live. And so refining these design precisions, you're able to create, I guess, a, a more seamless experience for an audience who is experiencing it on a larger scale. So Ryuji Ikeda is a Japanese artist and he has several permanent installations. And one of them is in Sydney and I used to walk past it quite often. Ryuji Ikeda, he's quite inspired by space and space dynamics. It was interesting during my research of projection art and phenomenology performativity that cosmologists say that experiences and one's own semiotic understandings of anything is thrust onto an audience within the first 0.4 seconds of exposure. And so um, having that in mind, with the first 0.4 seconds of exposure, we already try to implicate our understandings of a certain image that's being brought to us. And so I would like to design my work so that the first four seconds of exposure are quite awe-strucking to an audience member. Thank you.